Hello, here we will be uh, discussing a program uh, to check if all the vowels occur in a string that the user has entered. Okay, um, to check for all the vowels, right? So let's get started. The user will enter a string right let's say how are you oh, whatever right and he enters carriage return so so we are going to check for all the bubbles so let, we will have five variables a equals zero e equal to zero i equal to 0, o equal to 0, and u equal to 0. And we'll also start with the ch, which is a char with a null terminator, right? And, uh, oh, this one, I had to go up a little bit. Okay, that's fine. So that's the uh, idea, right? We have five variables which are initialized to zero and a ch which is initialized to null terminator. And uh, we will um, imagine that, right, it's there. So now we will use a while statement. I'm going to write a very skeleton version and you guys go ahead and uh, write the full version, right? While ch is not equal to end of line right so you get the value get char will get a character from the buffer from the user get char and uh, while not end of line means as soon as you see end of line it will quit so then you say if uh, ch ch is equal to equal to lowercase a or remember that you can enter uh, both lowercase and uppercase so we need to write program to accommodate both cases, right? So, if you have that, then you initialize a variable that we used from 0 to 1, right? Initially, it was a equal to 0. Now, we made that into 1. So, because we are able to detect a lowercase a, or the uppercase A, right? Yes. And sometimes it may be different, right? Else, like I said, I want you to guys write the rest of the stuff, but I'll write just one more case, okay? If CH equal to equal to E or CH equal equal uppercase e then we had the variable e equal to 0 right now you make it 1 so e equal to 1 so you do for the rest of the letters in the bubble right so I'm just going to leave it blank for you to fill it up and then once you have you're done reading all the characters because this thing will stop, right? Not not end of line, right? So yeah, so go back and say if a is greater than or equal to zero, or uh, greater than or equal to one, and or the other way around is it will never be greater than one. You can also say equal to equal to one 
right? So there are many ways to. So then you do for the other letters also. A E I equal equal to one, and so you go ahead and fill it up, right? For the rest of the vowels, if it is all one. Then you say all vowels occur in the string, else, no, some uh, use else, some may be missing. You can say some are missing, right? So that is a very simple program to uh, write using if then else. The same program can be written using switch case, right? Using switch case. So I'll just copy this. Can write using a switch case. How do I do it in a switch case? Okay. Very simple. Okay. So switch case, you just have to remove this portion of it and right. I want some space, so I'm going to get rid of this also. So you guys know what to do, right? So I'm going to just let go and I'm going to write here. So switch case is switch. CH, right? You need a brace. It says case. Uppercase A. Or case. Lowercase A. See that? So it, this basically it means uppercase A or lowercase a, then a equal to 1. You write a break. Break is like the else statement. Then case, lowercase, uppercase e. This is a semicolon, okay? So this is a semicolon. So you have to be little patient and be aware some people put a semicolon here and they always end up having problems so remember that right it's a sem it's a sem oh what am i saying this is a colon sorry ah this is a colon okay sorry that's a colon and uh, so this is a semicolon, right? So I was putting it at the wrong place, right? So see the difference between these two? And then case. E equal to one, break. Semicolon. You see that? Colon, semicolon. At least I woke you up, right? So then the same if then else statement, right? A equal to one. And you can do anything you want, right? All that. I want you to go and fill it up. That's like the way we did before, right? in the previous example. So that's how the switch case works. Let me talk, right? So go ahead and complete this program for the remaining vowels, right? And uh, get a practice on that, okay? That's all to it. So what did we do in this video? Let's go, let's go and review it, right? Oh, actually, we don't have to rip. We, we can directly go to the program. I have it here for you. Um, there it is. 
program to check for all vowels using switch case. All right. So here I have initialized all the variables, initialized the char to null terminator. I'm asking the user to enter a text and hit enter key. And, and I'm going to while check while ch is not equal to end of line which is exactly what we have been doing here right and uh, oh, so get char we'll get the char and uh, it'll go through um, ch if ch is um, See here, 97 is a lowercase a for apple, 64 is a lowercase, uh, uppercase a, and some places I mixed and match for you, so you get a good experience. Here I'm using a lowercase e and uppercase e, but the rest of the stuff is same as what we talked, right? So we did all that, and we did all that, right? So this break here is only gets you out of the switch case. I mean, remember that, not the loop, right? One more time, reviewing is good, right? So this break will skip all the rest of the cases and exit the switch case. And of course, you need to have um, matching braces for this which we so you need bracing here and a brace for that too well so you need two braces here see here I probably had it one one for that and one for the while loop okay so that's how we do so review this video, review this program. Here I'm using a if then else, okay, the same program, but using if then else. And see the difference. Some people like this one, some people like the switch case. It's all matter of style, all right? and uh, go ahead and review the whole program and see if you can improve in any way you can.